welcome to Verbling. Uh, my name is Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, uh, we're going to do an exercise, well, to practice, the, the idea is to practice using superlative adjective structures. That's the primary English-based concern. But uh, really, also, uh, we're going to get to know something uh, about each other and uh, about each other's uh, countries or oh, about uh, things in general. The idea of the class, kind of a free-form uh, class, we're going to take turns as students will ask questions uh, to other students, uh, or me, I'll be participating, about, uh, okay, about things about them, uh, try to keep it not too personal, uh, um, maybe about their country, um, maybe uh, about their culture. Uh, for example, easiest to give examples. For example, you might ask a fellow student, what's the tallest mountain in your country? Uh, and then, of course, the, the student you're asking should answer with the, uh, with the information with a grammatically correct sentence. That's the idea. Uh, and you can be as creative as you want to be. What is the longest you have ever stayed awake without falling asleep? Um, the questions will include a superlative adjective. That's the only requirement, and we're basically just going to get to know each other uh, a little bit. So that's the idea of, of the class. We can. I, I originally thought of this class as being kind of a game, but... I don't think it really needs to be. It can be just kind of a good icebreaker, get to know each other a little. Uh, all right, let me start off by welcoming Salvatore to the class. Hello, Salvatore. How are you? Hello, Hockley. I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. Doing all right? <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Is it, is it hot uh, in the uh, Philippines uh, right now, teacher? Well, okay. It's that part of the rainy season or monsoon season um, in which every day is the same. It, uh, I, I was up fairly early, 7.30, 8 this morning, and it was already hot. And it just gets hotter and more humid uh -huh. and more humid and hotter all day. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see. I see. Uh, I can. Uh, I can imagine, teacher. There's a comparative structure. Uh, it gets more humid. It gets hotter as the day goes on, and then I expect. I would not be at all surprised if right now the sun is shining. All right, it's four in the afternoon here, Salvatore. I would not be the least bit surprised if at the end of the class you hear a thunderstorm, because. Every day from sometime between five and six o'clock, it rains buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Monson, right, yeah. teacher. Yeah. <laughs> the, the street has, you know, this much water on the street, so everyone's driving through water in a matter of like five minutes. So, and that happens with alarming frequency. Every day, it's the same thing. <laughs> Set your watch by it. Okay. Uh, by usually 4.55 p.m., <laughs> the rain will begin. It's kind of ridiculous. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm exaggerating, of course, but anyway, you, the idea being it's the same thing every day. So, But then it cools it off, which is just in time for night, which means you can actually sleep at night. So it's not that bad. It's actually a good thing. Uh, okay. Let me also welcome Nader to the class. Hello, Nader. Hello. All right. You, you still verbling chat box less? <laughs> wow, I just made up an incredibly crazy word. Okay. 
Uh, all right, well, that's all right. We'll try to function without it. All right, uh, Santiago has also just joined us. Hi, Santiago. Hello, Wortley. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, loud and clear. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, now this is kind of a, a free form class in which you can interact with your fellow students if you want to know something about them or their culture. Please don't get too personal. <laughs> but the other idea is we're going to use superlative adjectives. So um, who's the most popular uh, actor in your country? What's the tallest building in your city? Uh, you can ask kind of personal questions. What's the longest you've gone without eating? Um, I don't know. Whatever you want to ask. And I will participate as well. You feel free to ask me questions if you're interested in America or where I live in the Philippines or me, whatever. I'm an open book. <laughs> uh, okay, Salvatore, who would you like to ask a question? Okay. Anything, anything you want to know, but remember we're going to use a superlative. Okay. Okay, try. I ask. Uh, I will ask a question uh, uh, of uh, Nader. Okay. Uh, uh, what is uh, the most beautiful city in uh, your country? Ah, okay. Well, uh, that requires uh, most beautiful. That requires a little bit of an opinion, but uh, yeah. Nader can only type for now, but uh, Nader, I'm stalling while you type your answer. Oh my goodness, now I have to try to pronounce it. Sharm el Sheikh. I'm sorry? Sharm el Sheikh. Sharm el Sheikh, I think, teacher. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Do you know this city then, Salvatore? Yes, I know because uh, oh. many people, many Italians, uh, go to there because uh, uh, it, it is a beautiful place. Okay. All right. Oh, well, well, all right. I wish we could talk about it more because I don't know much about it. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> Nader, do you have a question for myself or Salvatore Santiago? What would you like to know? Using a superlative. Uh, uh, okay. Who is longest driving experience? Who is the question for? Me. Oh. Okay, uh, Nader's asking me, what is the longest driving experience I've ever had? I'm not sure if you mean driving consecutive hours or if you're talking about driving driving a car. I know. Do you mean consecutively, uh, hour after hour, not just a long road trip? Okay. Consecutive hours, the, the longest, both. All right. <laughs> All right. Consecutive hours, the longest driving I've ever remember doing by myself, in which I was behind the wheel the entire time, was uh, 18 hours, I believe. Driving from some, you know, I think in Wyoming to Ohio before. Uh, I, I was driving, interestingly, I was driving with another person, but they were in another car. Uh, so we were trying to drive back to the East Coast, and we were convoying, we were going together, trying to sort of keep each other company driving. But we were both alone in our own cars. And, yeah, we went 18 hours before. And then we slept for four hours, and then we drove for 12 more hours to get to where we were going. So it was a 30-hour drive, but we made it in 34. Uh, yeah, a bit of a marathon. And the longest road trip I've ever made, I can't even, 18 hours without even, no rest at all. Yeah. Um, that's correct. 
that's the longest I remember. The longest road trip I ever made, I can't even imagine how many miles it was. I don't really know. I think if I remember correctly, looking at my odometer, that's the the thing on your car that measures how many miles, and those little numbers spin around. That's your odometer. Uh, I think it was something like 10,000 miles. <laughs> it was crazy. I took three months of my life off, and uh, I drove across America, but in the most ridiculous possible fashion that you can ever I went south, and then I started in the east, and I went south, and then west, and then back east again, and then north, and then south, and then in, and then I went east again, and then I went north, and then south, and then more south, and then north, and then back east again, and then I did not was was not like this. It was more like uh, like you could form a star shape. <laughs> it was every which way, and anyway. That took three months of my life. One of the, and possibly the greatest thing I have ever done. It was quite awesome, uh, unbelievable, fun. Yeah, America is a big country. <laughs> There's a lot to see. Okay, very good. Fair enough. Santiago, what question would you like to ask someone, anyone? Okay. Uh... For example, uh, to Salvatore, uh, what is for you the most delicious meal of oh, your country? I wanted to ask. I, I was going to ask <laughs> you exactly the same question. I swear. I swear I was. Okay. Sorry, Santiago. No, no it's okay. Oh, I'm reading my mind. But All right. I, I, I suppose there are many because you know. Italians. I know. Yeah. But we, I would like to know that the most uh, delicious for for Salvatore for him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Right. Salvatore. I think uh, uh, the most delicious meal uh, 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 are uh, any kind uh, of pasta, and uh, especially I prefer uh, to eat uh, lasagna. Really. <laughs> yes. Is that right? Do you, know, la do you know lasagna, teacher? I make a beautiful lasagna myself. <laughs> Good. I think you would I, enjoy my lasagna. Uh, uh, what about pizzas? <laughs> yes, of course, pizza is uh, very popular in Italy. I tried uh, pizza in Napoli when I was there. Yes. yes and it was delicious. Pizza, Yes, because the real pizza uh, is in Na Naples, because uh, uh, in Naples, uh, uh, pizzas, pizzas was invented. Ah, uh, okay, this is because it was so popular there, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, all right, see, we're, we're learning other things too, okay, that's cool. All, all right, uh, very, uh, very interesting, uh, okay. Um, all right, Santiago, a uh, question for you. I, I'm going to play along too. Santiago, what is the tallest building in your city, and can you tell me a little about it? Well, in my city, there are not many tall buildings, uh, just two or three, and the most... Um, the tallest, the tallest building is uh, an uh, an hotel called uh, Grand Sol, Big Sun. All right. Got uh, it. <laughs> there are about uh, twenty four floors. Ah, uh, okay. And yeah. it's just a, it's a, a hotel uh, near the beach. Okay. And uh, Nidair would like to know where you're from, Santiago. I'm from Spain, but I live. Uh, I'm from Spain, and I live in the in the south. There. The is in a city called uh, Alicante. It's a very touristic place. Um, here come uh, many many British people, German Germans, people from all Europe uh, in summit because we have we have a 
many beautiful beaches, uh, ports, you know, the, the typical <laughs> uh, summer touristic place. It's, okay. it's nice. I have a question. Does the Grand Seoul have uh, a, a, a rooftop dining? There, there is a restaurant in the last floor. In the yeah, and yeah. I never been there, but I heard that it's it's really good, and I suppose that the the sightings must be uh, beautiful, must be amazing, because it's in the last floor in the uh, in the top of the building. So okay, the the top floor we would normally the top, say the top floor. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, and the view is amazing. Yeah, because uh, you can see uh, from there the port, all the beach, uh, you know the the most touristic uh, places of the city. Mm -hmm. You can see from you can there see all the sights from there. Yeah. Another way to say that. Okay. Well, all right. It's good to know if we ever go there. Uh, all right. You should. I, I. I think you should go try out the restaurant on the top floor, in Santiago. It's always worth it. Very strangely, yeah. I, I went to the top. I went to the top floor of the tallest building in my city, which I'd never been to before. Last weekend is actually why I probably was thinking this, and it was great. I had a great time. There was like nobody there. Uh, but anyway, uh, Salvatore, it's your question. Okay, <clears throat> uh, for Santiago, uh, do you know uh, what is uh, the uh, longest uh, highway in uh, your country? The largest? The longest highway? La yes, longest highway. The longest highway. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe... The highway uh, which goes uh, um, for the coast from from Murf Murcia from the southern. Uh, this highway goes to uh, Barcelona. It's in the northern. So there are maybe six hundred kilometers or seven hundred kilometers, more or less. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, uh, I mean, without a stop, without a stopping, you know, is you can go directly from Barcelona from the from the south of my country. I suppose okay. that it is the the longest one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. In America, six hundred kilometers. That's like a Sunday drive. <laughs> That's where you go. <laughs> you go to the supermarket. Uh, okay. Well, um, well, but uh, if you go from uh, the place where I live to Galicia, there are more distance, of course. It's yeah. About, uh, right. One thousand and two hundred kilometers more. Left. Ah, okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking road trip. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, if you the I love traveling on uh, coastline highways. There's so I don't know. There's so much to see, and it's interesting to drive. And there's going to be interesting things to see, tourist areas, and I love traveling that way on uh, coastal areas. All right, uh, Nader, I think I saw. To Salvatore, okay. Okay. Salvatore, what is the most popular car in Italy, Nidair wants to know? And okay. me too. Uh, the most popular car uh, in Italy is uh, Ferrari, uh, but uh, uh, is also the uh, most expensive car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And the the most uh, useful uh, the useful uh, the most useful car 
Uh, in Italy is uh, Fiat uh, co called Fiat 500. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, of course everybody's heard of Ferrari, and I, which I misspelled. And a Fiat. Yeah, okay. So Ferrari is the most desired car, shall we say. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Most, but, most wanted in the yes. <laughs> most wanted, but okay. Most popular means the kind that most people want, all right? So there's a difference. Uh, okay. So there you go. Uh, all right. All right. Do you, uh, do you have a Ferrari? <laughs> Me? No, yeah. teacher. I don't have a Ferrari. <laughs> okay. That's when the, uh, my, my father... Uh, uh, had uh, had uh, many years ago uh, had uh, a Fiat 500. We call it Fiat 500. Fiat 500 is a utilitary car. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Salvatore. Do you know yeah, more or less the price of the Ferrari? Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Ferrari. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, can be. Could be. Uh, five hundred uh, millions. No, five. Five hundred. Uh, yes, five hundred uh, millions euro. No, sorry, one Eight million thousand. euro. One, One million. million. Uh, five, uh, sorry, uh, five thousand. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> hundred thousand euros. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Five hundred thousand euros. Really? Does it cost that much? Oh my. Yes. Gosh. Yes. Does anybody know? Okay, my question is an open question related. Does anybody know what is the most expensive car in the world? Does anybody know? I have no idea. Anybody have any idea? Maybe some Ferrari or Lamborghini or cars yeah. like that, more or less. They cost, uh, um, how Salvatore said before, yeah. Yeah. five, five, five um, 500,000 uh, euros or more or less. Yeah. They, I mean, they have those specialty cars where they only make like four of them or something. You know what I mean? Uh, custom made cars, right? Midair, exactly. Custom made cars. I think probably one of those is uh, the most expensive. A limited uh, Which car do you have? Um, um, okay. Me? Yeah. I don't. I don't actually. I don't have a car. Actually. I no. I don't even own a car. No. Uh, it's kind of not necessary in my city. I, I have an uh, electric scooter, and that, that's about ah. it. <laughs> okay, I see. Well, if you don't need the car. It's, it's better. To, yeah, to it's, kind of, <clears throat> it's kind of pointless. If I ever need to take a vacation, I can rent a car. You know, maybe once a year I might rent a car. But uh, I'll, I, take, I'll take the subway in the city yeah. where you go. Yeah, I, I work at home. So, yeah. Yeah, you can't, uh, I live in the Philippines, so all I have to do is go like this. I shouldn't even do that right here. Because if I, if I clap my hands like this, uh, someone will come driving up on a tricycle. That's a motorcycle with a sidecar. And they'll take you anywhere you want to go. And there's literally nowhere. You, you'd have to be in the jungle to not have somebody appear. <laughs> They're everywhere. Uh, yeah. Uh, in air, lunch was delicious. <laughs> no, I don't know why you don't hear the roosters. Um, there may be, maybe because they're doing construction next door. So I think the guy with the roosters, who's my neighbor on my side of the street, I think he moved the roosters somewhere. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe temporarily. I, I'm not sure what happened to the roosters. <laughs> okay. Well, my question was very general. 
<laughs> you missed them. My question was very general about uh, most expensive cars. So, Salvatore, I guess it's back to you again. Um, did, uh, yeah, Salvatore, your, your turn. What do you, what do you want to okay. know? What do you want to ask? Okay. Uh, uh, okay, for Nader. Okay. Uh, what is uh, Nader? What is the ugliest movie uh, that you watch it? The ugliest? Ugliest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you would probably use the worst. What is the worst, worst. movie? Yes. Yeah. The most the worst movie, yes. Yeah, the best, the worst. All right. What is the worst movie you've ever seen? Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Let's see many. That's a tough question. Wow. Uh yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah, you forget the one, okay, good point, he forgets the ones he hates. Uh, uh, I, I, I know what you mean. Have you ever experienced a movie, totally true story, uh, I, I tried to watch this movie like, I finally did, I finally was successful, I have to admit. But I, it took me like six tries to watch the movie The Fugitive. Uh, because every time I tried to watch it, I fell asleep. I fell asleep in the movie theater, like twice, and then it came, you know, came on TV years later, whatever. Couldn't watch it um, without falling asleep. It was amazing. It was like some kind of a drug or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Americans have plenty of bad movies, Santiago. All right. And Nader, what is your superlative question? The Godfather. You mean the series or uh, the one, the first one? The series is hard. Yeah. That movie won a lot of awards, actually. Mario Puzo. Uh... Okay, Nader, your question. What's your superlative question? I'll give you a second. Santiago, what is the most beautiful place you, you have ever been to? Question. Okay. <clears throat> what? Uh, maybe the jungles of Jamaica. They were really beautiful. Or the uh, Egyptian temples too. So I'm not really sure. There are many, many places where I have been. Um, they were really exciting, exciting places. Uh, uh, I don't know. There, are, there are many. I can, I can say that this place is the most beautiful in the world because uh, every country uh, have the, the, the special places. You know, the special places. Uh, for example, in Europe, there are too many, many beautiful places. Like in uh, Paris, uh, I was really impressed. Impressed when I saw the Eiffel Tour because uh -huh. it was it was uh, bigger than I thought. It was really uh -huh. I know <laughs> it's really impressed. It's really impressed. So uh, I love traveling because you can discover many, many of these places. Yeah. That's a that's an almost impossible question. The most beautiful is Different places yeah, are different are beautiful in oh, different way, ways. It's a very it's a very tricky question. Oh. Yeah, and then, you know you have natural beauty and man-made beauty and, and like that. Uh, I I'm sorry I have to ask a follow-up question. Santiago, I've been to Jamaica like four times. Where do, where were you in Jamaica? We were in the north, 
um, in a place called Ocho Rios. Ocho in Rios. Yeah. And we were to Keystone, uh, to different places, but I can't remember very well because it was in 2006. So, okay. but it was it was really interesting. We were to a place where the waterfalls. Yeah. Ca yeah, come <laughs> come to the beach, right? I was totally going to ask you, did you go to the waterfalls? I, I, yeah, no, yeah. No, uh, Dan, uh, I think the name is Dams River Falls or something like that. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, it's not quite something. I don't, something like that. Uh, well, yeah. You, you know something River Falls. I do. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, Beautiful. Did awesome. you go to the top of the waterfall, walking yeah. around the water? <laughs> like all the tourists. Yeah, I, yeah, like all the tourists do. Plus, I'm yeah, a hiker, so. Me I, too, me too. Was really. What I do. It's a very uh, beautiful place. Mm. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, um, yeah, Jamaica is quite beautiful, actually. Um, yeah, there are many mountains with uh, um, the beaches. Some of the yeah. beaches. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. Beautiful blue water. That's it. Duns Rivers Falls. That's it. Duns River Falls. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Nadir, got it. That's it exactly. All right. That's cool. Uh, that, that's fun. We've been somewhere at the same place. That's cool. Okay. Santiago, uh, it's uh, actually your question. Okay. Uh, my question is for Salvatore. Um, what uh, what is for you the most uh, interesting country uh, where you have been uh, in or or two? I don't know the. Okay, what is the most interesting, the most interesting country you have been to? You have been to, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me think, uh, because uh, there are uh, many interesting, uh, interesting uh, country. Probably uh, the most interesting, interesting, interested uh, country that uh, I have been uh, when uh, I went to China. Ah. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you tell us more? What, what was uh, interesting? Why? Yeah, please. The, the people, the sites, the, uh, the culture. Both. Both. I remember, uh, for example, when uh, I was uh, in Shanghai, there are uh, a lot of traffic uh, uh, on the street. Uh, uh, there, there were uh, a lot of people uh, uh, around the city. Uh, I remember uh, uh, the food; uh, uh, it was delicious. Uh, uh, I remember uh, the noodle. Do you know the noodle? <laughs> the noodle, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. They like and their they, noodle. Yes, and uh, of course uh, uh, I like uh, the temples uh, around the China and the Great Wall. Okay, you you like the the what? The temples. Uh, temples. Temples. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Temples and the Great Wall. Ah, uh, okay. So you went up on the Great Wall. Yes. Yep, near near Beijing. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. All right. Well, that's interesting. All right, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, all right. I my question now, and I, I'm sorry, but I am going to go right back to you, Salvatore. Salvatore, what is the most uh, ex exciting or fun thing to do in Italy right now? If I went to Italy tomorrow, <laughs> what would be the most exciting Sorry, okay, thing to do? You, yeah. Sorry, okay. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Uh, 
if if I wanted to go to a, an event in Italy in the near future, what would be the most exciting event or thing to do in Italy? Okay, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I can uh, uh, I can uh, uh, say you that you have to go to visit uh, Expo in Milan. Expo is uh, an event where uh, uh, there are uh, uh, there are uh, uh, any kind uh, of uh, food uh, around the world because the the event uh, talk about uh, uh, the food all over the world. Mm. Okay. So you think I like to eat? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, absolutely, I can tell you, instead of absolutely, I can say you, uh, it, you could say I can say to you, all right, but probably... I can tell, I can tell to you. I, no, you don't need to with tell, but you do need to with say, all right. Uh, and more often than not, you'd say, well, I can tell you that you, you would enjoy blah, 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 blah. Uh, probably tell would be the word to use there. All right. Okay. And it's back to you again, Salvatore. Uh, any more questions you'd like to ask? You, uh, okay. Okay. Yes, for you, Hockley. Yeah. yeah. In your in your opinion, uh, you are a, you are a teacher, and uh, what is the uh, more difficult uh, uh, language to learn? Oh well, okay. First of all, what is the most difficult? <coughs> Excuse me, language to learn. I. I in my opinion, I'm not qualified to give an opinion. <laughs> uh, as I, you know, there are so many languages that I've never even heard, never mind tried to learn. Uh, I, I, um, I try to learn a few words here and there from my students, and I seem to never be able to get Chinese right. <laughs> It always comes out wrong because it involves pitch and tone. Um, it, it's not necessarily how you say the syllable. You can change the word by changing if you say uh or ah. Uh, you know, very confusing. Yes, yeah, I know. I know because uh, in Italy lived uh, uh, a lot uh, of people uh, from China. Mm. Okay. Have you ever tried to learn any Chinese? Uh, some some words, teacher. Some words yeah. uh, I know. <laughs> yes. Really? So, for example, yeah. uh, hello. Uh, I know that. Uh, uh, I know is uh, Nihai. <laughs> Nihai. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. Nihai. Yeah, I know that one too. I, you know why I know that one? It's so stupid because we have a kind of soda pop uh, in the United States. And it's grape, grape soda, and it's called grape knee high. So whenever I see a Chinese person, I think about grape soda. <laughs> <Nihai. laughs> okay. I feel like I'm asking for a soda. It's such a weird way to. Never mind. I'm embarrassed to tell you. All right. Uh, okay. Nader, your go. What's your question for us here? Santiago, which months of the year are best to visit Spain? Santiago? All right. That's a very good question. Nader has plans to visit Spain. When should he go? That's an excellent question. What well, like depends, depends on the on the place. Uh, uh, on the place that you you can visit. No, you you want to visit. Uh, 
if you go, if you want to go to the north of Spain, I think it's better to come uh, here on May, June, August, uh, on summer, on the summer season, because uh, if not. If you go to the north of Spain in winter, there are a lot of snow there. It's very difficult to visit places, to to drive a car with the snow, and it can be it, it can be it could be dangerous too. So, in my opinion, if you go to if you want to go to the north of Spain, it's better to go in the summer season in May, June, August, or September. But if you go, if you if you like to go to to the south, um, it doesn't matter. You can come to the south of Spain in any month. Any month is well. Any month. If you come to Sevilla, for example, in August, uh, there are there is a uh, 50 degrees of temperature. So I think it's not a very good idea because. <laughs> You can fry an egg on the <laughs> ground. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. It is 50 degrees. Instead of there are 50 degrees, it is 50 degrees. It is. Okay. It is yeah. 50 degrees. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, also, in, instead of on the summer season, you should use in the summer season. In the summer season. Okay. Yeah, we use in for long periods of time, in the 1960s, in the 1900s, in July, in the yeah, summer. In the summer. On, on is for the days, on, on Monday. On, yeah. I knew, right. I knew, but exactly. you know, when, when, you are, when you are speaking, when you are talking, yeah. you want to, to make the, the less mistake, but sometimes it's difficult because you, yeah. have, to rem you, you have to remember Every you know, every preposition, every everything is sometimes. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, okay. Uh maybe there would like a follow up question. When does winter start in Spain? When is is Santiago? <laughs> it's okay. Um, follow up questions. Uh, October, October. Hmm. October, November uh, are cold. Okay. Are cold. All right. Uh, and okay. until until uh, March or or yeah, until March or May, more or less. Okay. All right. Sounds the same as where I'm from in the United States. Mm. Uh, same, exactly the same. Santiago, it is now your uh, turn to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember the country of Nader. Okay. Ah, uh, Egypt. Yeah, okay. Egypt. Uh, okay. Um, which is, in your opinion, the most beautiful temple in in Egypt, for yeah. example? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there are a lot. <laughs> I know there are a lot. <laughs> yeah, there are. For I want to know if it's, if the same that. I I thought I thought. Okay. What do you think? You have a personal um, Luxor. That's yeah, what I, I was thinking. I, I have been in Luxor, and for me, the best, the best one was uh, Abu Simbel. Was what again? A Abu Simbel. It's um, uh -huh. this temple is made in the the rock. And you can see four uh, big statues of uh, Ramses. There are four. I'm sure you know what it what is. Are they uh, uh, statues of Anubis? Is it that one? The, uh, there are uh, four um, big statues, and they are uh, Abu Simbel. Yeah, they are oh. seat, and it's really uh, ah. impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive. One of them are 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 broke. A break, 
Okay. One one is broken. One is one is broken. Okay. One is broken, but um, that's the same. It's it's really impressed. Ah, okay. Really impressive. Impressive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, there it's on the money. All right. Well, it doesn't help me. I've never seen the money. <laughs> okay. Uh, still pretty cool. All right. Hmm. It, interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. Hmm. All right. Uh, Nader, I, 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 I want to ask you a question as well. I, I, my question, I, turn around, turn around is fair play, as we say. What's the longest road trip you've ever taken? Uh, oh, okay, thanks for the, thanks for the picture. But, uh, okay, what is the longest road trip that you've ever taken? 12 hours and 12 hours back? Okay, where, where were you going? <laughs> oh, 1,500 kilometers. Okay. Sometimes my American brain has to uh, translate kilometers to miles to make it make sense to me. Uh, about It's roughly 1,000 miles. 1.6 kilometers is a mile. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's a trip. Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that information. Salvatore. Uh, okay. From east to west to Saudi Arabia. All right. Thank you. Salvatore, your question. Okay. Um, for Santiago, uh, 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 what is the uh, what is the happiest uh, city in your uh, country? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Well, that's you an say, interesting. You say happiest? Happiest? Happiest, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting but question. It depends. Uh, I think it depends on the on the mood of the people that live there. I don't know the happiest. It could it could be the the cities on the coast or in the Iceland, like in Ibiza in summer, because there are many there are many party animals. <laughs> uh, yeah, taking parties, you know, and people are all day in the uh, on the beach. And at night they go to the discos to drink, to drink and and dance or drinking and and dancing. So I suppose that these kind of cities are the the happiest okay. in, in summer. Yes. <laughs> All right. If if I can say one thing, uh, I went. Uh, to Malaga in August uh, some years ago, and uh, uh, there there was uh, uh, there was uh, a pa there was uh, uh, the feria the feria of Malaga. It it, it was very interesting because uh, it was uh, a party of the city. Did, did you go uh, to Torremolinos? Yes, I go to yes I went to Torremolinos too. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is that? What is that? Help me out here. Tormalinos. Uh, feria is. Uh, I don't know how to t translation feria, teacher. Feria. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Feria is, is fair. Say no. What's again? Santiago. Santiago. Yeah. Is it a fiesta or festival? Yes, uh, fiesta. Yeah, festival. Yes. Similar. Uh, festival. Festival. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Malaga is a, is a, a city of uh, Picasso, teacher. The ah. painter. Yeah, nice. Yeah, okay. 
Gotcha. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that information. All right. Yeah. In English, we say. Uh, interestingly, we say festival is really the English word, but we uh, every English speaker knows the word fiesta. We we can say. Oh, fair. Oh, fair. okay. Fair. Yeah, Santiago. All right. Yeah, Americans love fairs. Um, we we have uh, fairs all the time, especially harvest time. This time of year, as a matter of fact, the fairs start. Fair season. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. All right. Yeah, okay. Those are fairs. Okay, that's different than a festival, really. But, uh, okay. A festival has a specific purpose. Fairs are kind of all, all kinds of things. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Santiago, it's your question. Okay, um, let me see. Uh, okay, do you live in the Philippines? You say, I do now live in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, what is for you the, uh, well, the most delicious uh, meal in this country, in the Philippines? <laughs> okay, uh, all right, fair question. I. Uh, I, I really like um, uh, a dish that's uh, called um, sinigang. All right, I'll write it. It's called sinigang. Now, sinigang is like a stew. Um, uh, it's like a kind of a stew, and it's made. It's interesting because it's. Um, it, first of all, you can you can have shrimp. Sinigang or pork sinigang or chicken sinigang, pork or shrimp are the most popular. But it's interesting because it has tamarind in it. Uh, I don't know if you, knew, you know what tamarind is, but its tamarind is very sour. So it's made with tamarind, which is very sour, as well as ginger, which is kind of spicy. There's a lot of ginger and garlic and... Um, so it, it's both spicy and sour at the same time, and hot peppers, uh, chili peppers as well. Uh, can you prepare it with uh, fish too? Fish or meat? Oh, yeah. Or? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and oh, that's, quite, that's okay. also quite common. I, I forgot. Silly me. Um, yeah, they, they have a kind of fish which is like uh, standard. Uh, I don't know. It's a, um, a staple. All right, a staple is something, a type of food that everybody eats. Obviously, in Asia, rice is a staple. All right, maybe you know, uh, in America, I would say bread is a staple food. They have a staple fish here. It's called milkfish. Everybody eats it, and um, so yeah, they they use it in synagogue uh, as well. It's a very great. I just this fish is very does taste very delicious. It has a white. It's not flaky fish, white flaky, but it's white and firm. But this crazy fish has bones coming out like this way, sideways, down. Its ribs are like all the way around its body. It's got like eight pairs of ribs. It's the most bony fish you ever could imagine. <laughs> No. So it, is it difficult to eat or not? A pain in the neck to eat. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I I love the taste of it. It's quite delicious, but it's uh, such a pain in the neck. It's so full of bones. I can't believe they. You use more calories picking out the bones than you <laughs> yeah. get from the fish. It's very good for a diet, I suppose, because. Uh, you spend more time picking the bones out than you do eating. Yeah, but it is delicious. But anyway, I really, really like uh, synagogue. It's delicious. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the information. You're welcome. If I go and, there, I would like to try. It. <laughs> yeah, and they, they have it everywhere. Uh, you know, like Spain, I'm sure, and like Italy, I'm also equally positive. Different areas in the north and south have different dishes they're famous for, right? Um, so it's no different here. 
Uh, you're going to find dishes that just don't exist in other areas of the country. But synagogue is pretty much everywhere has that. And the most famous dish here is called adobo. And it's very simple. It's, it's chicken, garlic, onion with a lot of uh, soy sauce, really. But it's kind of reduced down. So, but anyway, everybody eats it here. Anyway, uh, it's okay. Uh, all right, gentlemen, uh, I'm about exhausted out of superlative questions <laughs> myself. And in any case, we are about out of time. So, thank you for uh, what I found to be a very enjoyable class. I really enjoyed talking to you. Talking to you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Hawkeye. Thank you, Hawkeye. Nice to see you. Thank you. Right. Nice to see you. All see right. you soon.